Are you a beginner looking to find out what is Zen? Or maybe you've got a bit of knowledge about Zen and you just want to deepen this knowledge. Either way, continue watching and find out how this book can help you. I've included timestamps below so that you can get to exactly the part of the video you wish to watch. The first one is for the review section which just gives my opinion if this book is worth reading and what benefits you'll gain from it. And the second timestamp is the summary which is all the main concepts of this book. Let's start with the review of this book. I would definitely recommend reading this book as it gives you all the essential knowledge you need of Zen in a very simple manner and also focusing more on the practical aspects of Zen so that you can start practicing after reading only a few pages of the book. And even though my summary can give you all the core concepts of this book, there are many more beautiful examples which you'll miss out on and some of these examples might help you get a better understanding as everyone is different and different examples resonate with different people. Okay, so now let's move on to the summary of this book. Zen Mind Beginner's Mind consists of a collection of notes taken by students during Shinryu Suzuki's lectures. And the essence of this book is found in this quote from the Zen Master. The practice of Zen Mind is beginner's mind. The innocence of first inquiry, what am I, is needed throughout the Zen practice. The mind of a beginner is empty, free from habits of the expert, ready to accept, to doubt, and open to all possibilities. It is the mind which sees things as they are, which step by step and in a flash can realize original nature of everything. This shows the essence of the book, which is simplicity and being open. This book is then split into three different aspects which can help one reach this beginner's mind. Firstly, right practice. The practice of Zen involves sitting in a seated position and meditating, which they call Zazen. Here we're going to look at key aspects of your posture. So, the most important thing is to keep the back straight. Then, you're going to try and fold your legs into lotus position. This involves having the right foot on the left thigh and the left foot on the right thigh. If you can't do this because you're not flexible enough, you can also do half lotus or just cross legs works well. And then we make sure that our ears and our shoulders are in a line by relaxing the shoulders back and down. Hands are in your lap with the left hand on top of the right hand so that the middle fingers touch one another. And then the thumbs are brought to touch together to form an oval inside the hand. This is known as the cosmic mudra. Hands are held up against the body in the lap with the thumbs at the level of the navel with the arms just slightly away from the body. Once your posture is correct, then you focus on your breathing. Yeah, he says to focus on the breath as if it was a door opening and closing. You just watch it open and close without trying to close or open the door yourself. My favorite example to use is imagining your breath as waves in the ocean and the inhales are the waves crashing and the exhales are the waves drawing back and you're just watching it like you're doing when you're at the sea without trying to control it. And while you're watching your breath, you'll notice that your thoughts keep coming and distracting you from your focus. The point here is just to watch your thoughts as they come and you don't need to restrict them or try to control them. Just watch them form and let them pass and then return back to your breathing. Finally, he talks about bowing nine times at the end of each practice, and this is done to remove the ego and surrender oneself to the universe. Next, let's look at having the right attitude when practicing Zazen. Firstly, focus is on being present in each and every moment during your Zazen practice. Yeah, he gives the example of how fire completely burns up wood, leaving no memories of the past and nothing else added such as emotions or pride to one's practice. And you start by focusing on just being present during your practice and then you try and bring it into your whole life. Secondly, acceptance. This involves accepting each moment as it is and seeing all feelings and disturbances without any judgment. Just as weeds grow and flowers die, this is all the cycle of life. And as the weeds die, they will then become fertilizer for new flowers to grow, and thus the cycle continues. Next, do not add anything to your practice such as pride, desire, or goals, as these hinder your progress to reaching your true nature. And finally, naturalness. This is like a seed following its path to become a tree. They do not think, they just be exactly what they are. And finally, we'll look at having the right understanding. 
Here, there are eight core principles from the book. And these are all gems of wisdom which one can use to help improve their practice. The first one is that the true purpose of Zen is to see things as they really are. Next is that we exist not for the sake of something else, we exist for the sake of ourselves. Focus on experience, not philosophy. Zen is about returning to your original nature through Zazen and not about understanding or learning philosophy. And this is part of the reason why there's not much philosophy in this book. Do not focus too much on your teachings or what your teacher says. Zazen is all about you. The teacher gives you the understanding, but only you can find your true nature. And next, he recommends that practice should be done daily and consistently to achieve good results and that the practice should be done according to the individual, little by little, so that you don't fizzle out if you try to do too much too quickly. Next, practicing emptiness. This is about hearing all information as if it's the first time you've heard it and do not add your own preconceived ideas towards it. You just listen completely openly and then afterwards you can decide whether this information is useful or not. And finally, true Buddhism is that Buddha is in everyone, everything and every action. So this makes all actions and things equally important. So, in summary, the main concepts of the book are First, right posture. Secondly, right attitude. And thirdly, right understanding. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more, check out my book summary playlist.